Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday morning, and I had some things I wanted to share that were on my mind. And I was actually going to do uh, this video and post it later in the um, evening, but I decided to do it this morning while it's still fresh in my head. What I wanted to talk about was how our uh, parents and our early childhood influence our love languages. And I recently heard about this and it resonated so much with me. Now, if this doesn't resonate with you, that's fine. Everyone is affected differently, but I believe that a lot of people will be able to relate to this. So if you know anything about the love languages, um, you know that I think there's five. There's um, acts of service, gifts, words of affirmation, physical touch, and quality time. Yeah. My love language happens to be quality time. And I'll explain to you how um, the two, the, the parenting and the childhood ties in with creating or developing our love languages as an adult. Uh, if you have a parent who is physically or emotionally absent, that may develop your love language into quality time. Because as a child and that wound of not having your parents spend time with you and be with you physically, uh, that sort of develops into this need for quality time in our romantic adult relationships and friendships. If you have a parent who uh, never told you anything positive about yourself, uh, never gave you any uh, good reinforcement, never told you you're doing a good job, you can do whatever you want, never gave you verbal encouragement, you're going to develop into a person that uh, is going to want positive words of affirmation. If you had a parent who uh, just was checked out and not doing the things that a parent should do on the physical level, such as, um, you know, those types of things will develop into that uh, you're not having that fulfilled. Um, if you were never given anything as a child, you were never given presents, you were never given a birthday party, um, Christmas was sp scarce for whatever reason, maybe your parents financially couldn't afford to or they just didn't want to, you may want to receive tons of gifts as an adult. What else did I miss? Oh yeah. Um, well, I said quality time and I said acts of service. And that was a parent that just didn't want to do for you gifts. Uh, you didn't get them as a child. Now you want to get them. Um, what's the other one? Physical touch. You were a baby or a child who didn't receive hugs, physical affection, nurturing in the physical way that you would expect from a parent. Uh, you weren't um, cuddled, you weren't kissed, things like that. So as an adult, you are going to crave that physical touch and that's going to become uh, your love language. Some of us have more than one uh, and have secondary ones. Like my first one is quality time and uh, my second one is physical touch. So um, you can imagine how those might tie in. So sometimes these affect us in a negative way. They also can be from a positive childhood. So if you did receive uh, lots of words of encouragement and affirmation, if you did receive gifts, if you did receive plenty of time and you received plenty of acts of service, you received plenty of physical touch, that's still gonna be something that you want as an adult because that's your baseline for knowing what your first experience with love is as a child. So. Uh, these things help to form how we are and how we relate to adults and a romantic and a friendship level. So it was just something to think about. If you have developed your love language based on positive uh, childhood experiences, then that is wonderful and that's 
you know what to expect you know what you grew up with you know what you deserve what you're worthy of and so then you seek that in a partner and if it was from a negative aspect you still seek that in the opposite form from a partner so food for thought so how can we um, better understand how to work with our love language if we develop that through a negative experience I can only give you an example from my own self. Um, I typically during my early 20s and in my dating life, uh, when I was younger and still really not understanding how or who I was, I was attracted to a lot of emotionally unavailable uh, and at times physically unavailable people, uh, people who were critical, uh, people who did not accept me as I am. Uh, someone who always had a problem with my looks, always nitpicking about little things here and there, um, about me physically. Uh, those are things that I tended to just subconsciously attract and, and partners that I would date, not knowing why that was happening. However, once I became aware of that, I had the power to change that. I physically said to myself, I, from this point on, I'm not going to accept this. I'm going to only attract people who accept me as I am, who accept me for my natural hair, who accept me for me being curvy, uh, who accept me for me being weird and eccentric and different and all the things that make me me because I grew up, um, I grew up really supported by my grandparents. So, I ended up choosing a partner after I learned how to reverse that, who was stable and who was supportive and loving. And so if you did have a situation like that, but you were raised by grandparents, like many of us were, and if they were positive influence, we can reverse that and we can seek that and attract that in a partner instead of what we don't want. So as I became an adult, um, I started to see proof that my early experiences weren't really indicative of who I was or what I deserved. So when I got out in the world and I began to make friends and I began to see people in a romantic way, people were like, you are so interesting. You are awesome. You're funny. You are beautiful the way you are. Uh, you are just all of these things. And I was just like, really? Um, because I actually was in a state of shock because I didn't feel as if I had anything interesting or worthy uh, about myself, which is sad, but that's just the reality of it, you know, and, and there's people that had, uh, I'm not saying I had the worst situation, but there are people that have had it worse. There are people that are uh, used to um, toxic physically and emotionally abusive parents and so they they expect that as an adult. So they get into these relationships where they're beat up and they're talked to like trash. And they stay because that's what they're used to. That's their first experience with love. So that's what they know love to be. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can definitely change that. You can definitely reclaim your power. And you can love yourself. And when you have that full on hardcore self love, that's reflected in all of your relationships as an adult moving forward. So if we have that power, we can take it back, we can own it, we can walk in our own magic and nobody can stop you once you reach that point. Nobody can stop you once you honor your boundaries, once you honor who you are and what you deserve. Uh, nobody can change that. It's up to you, no one's gonna do this homework or this shadow work for you you have to do it for yourself and let me tell you once you make that change everything's gonna change like your whole world everything the people in it the situations that you draw to yourself everything's gonna change for the better so just know that you have that power and if you didn't know it now you know it because I'm reminding you so I just want to end this video by just reinforcing how important it is to be authentic and to share your truth. Um, a lot of my 
uh, fears is just like, um, not really fears, I don't wanna use that word. A lot of the things that I deal with are just not being sure of if I should put certain things out there about myself, if I, if I should share certain truths and things like that, but I have to. If I can't be myself, how do I expect anyone to appreciate me for who I really am if I'm trying to put on a facade or trying to be like somebody else or anything like that? And I encourage everyone to do that. And for me, the past week, I stayed off social media for like a week. And all I did was spend time with my best friends, which are nature, um, the sea, the sun, the earth. Um, I, I spend time in nature and that's how I always I'm able to go inwards and receive so much knowledge and downloads and inspiration and guidance from the ancestors, from my higher self, uh, from spiritual beings. So, you know, it's important to disconnect sometimes. It's important to be authentic. Uh, it's important also to know, like if you also are in this film, this field and you're a person that helps others, whether that's in a spiritual way, metaphysical, um, physical healer, like a massage therapist or something like that. Um, you know, it's important to, to, to be you, but to also not compare yourself to other people. If you are very social media oriented, um, don't compare yourself to other people and how many followers they have and this and that because maybe wait maybe your medicine is meant to be exclusive maybe you don't have to reach 20,000 people maybe it's less maybe it's less than what you want but maybe your medicine is exclusive maybe your magic is only meant to be handled or to be absorbed by a certain amount of people. So get out of your head with that. And that's a lesson that I've learned recently too. Like I, I don't care. Like sometimes my videos get a few likes, I'm sorry, a few views and sometimes I get a lot. It just really depends. So I've stopped worrying about it. I'm on here just being myself and I hope that I am a, a vessel of uh, channeled inspiration for you and I'm gonna finish my coffee if you guys like my coffee cup it says which better have my coffee <laughs> so I'm gonna finish my coffee and I'm, I'm glad I was able to share that with you this morning I hope that you have a blessed weekend and I wish only peace and bliss for you